Christian friends. It certainly is a privilege to be out here again tonight on this occasion to minister to the needy the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so happy to see you all again. And after having two nights of speaking of the services, why, just merely preaching the gospel to the best of my knowledge, then tonight we're to have prayer for the sick and for the healing services. And I trust that you'll pray for me now. And this is the first time since I've come, my last meeting of a healing service, they packed me both in and out in India, and my clothes were tearing off almost, and everything were nearly 500,000 people gathering. And it's a wonderful thing to know the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection and his love to us. Now, just before uh, we start praying for the sick, I certainly covet the prayers of all of you for me tonight, and I want to take the regular theme of our campaigns always is Hebrews 13, 8, of Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's the theme that we use, that we believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now, for a little scripture reading, I would like for you to read, maybe not now, but when you can, on the twelfth chapter of St. John and the twentieth and twenty-first and twenty-second verses. I'd like to read this, for I'm, I'm being a man, my words will fail, but when I read his words, it can't fail. It's God's word, and we believe them to be his word. And then I know if no more takes place in me reading the word, God will bless his word. He said it wouldn't return to him void. It would accomplish that which it was purposed. Now in here, we read this beginning with the 20th verse, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to the worship of the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Tell us Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip. Tell us Jesus. And now shall we bow our heads just a moment while we talk to the author of this, please? Our kind Heavenly Father, with grateful hearts full of assurance that Thou hearest the prayers of Your children we come approaching tonight, knowing that Thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that Your lovely ways and your attitude towards the people of the days when you were here in flesh is the same tonight, for you are the same. And I pray that you will manifest your love to these tonight, to the sinner, to the backslider, and to the ungodly, and to the sick and the needy, the crippled, the afflicted, the blind, the hawk. And may this be a night, Father, that when we close the services to walk away, may we say like those who came from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us because of his presence? God, we pray that you'll take us tonight like you did at Emmaus. Now, Father, you're all love, and you love your children everywhere. But when you got those disciples to themselves and they shut the outside world out, you were in a room with them alone, then you'd done something just a little different from the average man, though you'd preached to them all day, and they still didn't recognize you. But 
the way you had done something, they realized it was only you could do it that way. And they all knew then it was you. And Father, we've shut our heart's door to the things of the world, to all skeptic thoughts. We want to be shut in with you tonight. God grant tonight that you'll do something just a little different from the average time. That the people might know that you love them and you're here and want to make them well and forgive them other sins and grant it, Father. And now as your humble servant, submitting myself to thee and this church also for the working of the Holy Spirit, we ask these blessings in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. <clears throat> Just for a moment to kindly get used to each other, I want to ask you just a question, and we'll speak about it for a few moments, if God willing. <clears throat> These Greeks was a, a curious type of people. The they Bible says, Paul, I believe, said the, the Greeks seek wisdom, the Jews seek signs. And these Greeks, when they come to ask about Jesus, they didn't exactly desire to see his miracles, they just wanted to see Jesus. And I believe that that would be the attitude of every Greek here, not only Greek, but of every other nationality that's represented here tonight, of the nations and tribes of the earth, as America is the molding pot where we all come together of different nationalities. I believe that's the desire of every man that ever read the Bible or ever had a thought that there was a God of heaven. His desire was to see Jesus. And I know that everyone will see him someday, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that he's the Son of God. But I want to ask this. It, it, do we have to die to see him? No, we don't. And now, the Scripture theme says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Therefore, when he died, he was only dead for a few hours, but he rose again. And my contention to the Christian church today, beyond the realms of theology, uh, my contention is that Jesus is alive among the Christian people just as real as he ever was, uh, manifesting himself and his deity and power to forgive sins and to heal the sick, to make the lame to walk, the blind to see, and perform everything that he did when he was here on earth, he'll do it yet now. If that's either the truth or the Bible is wrong. And for me, if I didn't believe the Bible to be the full truth and the Word of God, I certainly wouldn't be here in New York tonight uh, trying to represent it to the people. I have a wife and two little babies at home, and wife is to be mother again right away, and I, you know how sh they need me at home. But I'm here because that I felt that God wanted me to come to Beamington. New York, and I'm here to do all that I can to help everybody I can, for I realize that there's no person here or nowhere that would want to be lost, and that every Christian wants to get closer to God, and more we know of God or see of God, the more we love him and the more we believe him. And now I want to ask you something. You Christians and also non-Christians, if this scripture tonight is true that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if he will come into this building, 
just as real as he was in the days that he was here on earth, will every one of you accept him to be the same yesterday, today, and forever? Will you believe him, love him, surrender your lives? And so? May he grant it to you. Now, they wanted to see Jesus. How many of you want to see him, man? Would you just want to see him? Sir, I do. God knows that's right. I want to see him. Well, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, why can't we see him? Why can't we? They've seen him then. And if he's the same today, same in principle, same in compassion, same in power, same in love, same in manifestation, why can't we see him then today as we did then? Now, if we were going down into Beamington tonight, if our Lord Jesus was here tonight, I say this with reverence, perhaps to be rejected by 99% of the church members of Beamington tonight. In the way that he had come, in the form that, in our theology, the way that we have taught him to be, and so forth, if he had walked in dressed as an ordinary man and started teaching, perhaps many of them would not welcome him and put him out of the church because his policies would be so much different. For if, if Jesus is the same, the religious people of the world is the same. You see, friends, God never takes his spirit from the earth. God takes his man, but not his spirit. The spirit that was upon Elijah come upon Elisha, and then come upon John the Baptist, and predicted to come again in the last days. See, God never takes his spirit. He takes his man. He taken Christ, but Christ's spirit returned to the earth. The devil takes his man, but never the spirit. And the same religious cults of that day, high, classic, educated, scholarly, them same spirits live right on today. Same kind of people are captured by the same influence of teachers. When Jesus would come in today, he'd probably be just as unwelcome as he was then, for he certainly didn't endorse their churches or their theology and was turned out bitterly because their priests and ministers didn't believe him. They said he was a devil and because he did the works of God that the Bible said he would do. Now, if we were going down in Beamington or some of these cities tonight to find the Lord Jesus, you'd probably find him among the common people. You believe that? Just be common, humble people like there is here tonight would perhaps be the kind of people that would be where the Lord Jesus would be. For in that day, the common people heard him gladly, said the writer Luke. Now, would we look for a man that was dressed a little different from the ordinary man if we were looking for Jesus? No, we'd look for a man dressed just like the common man that walks on the street. Jesus walked in among man. Many times walked right along him and them looking for him everywhere and couldn't see him because he was just an ordinary man. He didn't dress any different. He didn't dress in clergy clothes to make himself any different. He just had a nice, neat, clean clothes on, dressed like the average man that walked on the street in that day, spoke the same kind of a language. It's so simple his language was. If you only knew the truth, that's where your scholars get mixed up. See? His language was they interpret the Greek and the Hebrew and so forth, and they try to interpret in the terms of the real high scholarly way of doing it, and he just used common language like we would, see. And that's why they're all confused in it. You're different with that. Don't go to thinking them things. I, I can tell you now. See. So that's right, but that's the truth, what it was. Now, well then, when he was here, would we look for him to be some great theologian? Some great high speaker? No, he wasn't. He was just a common, ordinary man. And would we look for all the churches to be patronizing and saying, this is the big fellow, this is the guy? No, they'd be against him. There'd just be a few common people that would hurt him. Well, would his, would his speech be so, for such an eloquent speech that he would just simply be able to, with his great swelling words, just to conquer people? No, he wouldn't be that type of person. Well, what kind of a per person would we look for if we was to look for Jesus tonight? Let's take his ministry. 
Now, the Bible said he's the same today that he was then. Now, the first thing, when his ministry first started out, there was a fellow, fellow by the name of Philip got converted. And as soon as he got converted, he went to find his friend Nathaniel. It was a good, true sign that he got converted. When a man wants with Jesus, he wants everybody to know about Jesus. And so Philip goes to find Nathaniel, and he found him under a tree. And so he said, Come see who I have found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So Nathaniel, a very curious sort of a fellow, a righteous man, raised up and said, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, could any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip gave him the real answer, Come and see. That's the best way to find out whether anything's real or not. Go look at it. That's the way Moses found out about the burning bush. He turned aside to take a look at it, see why it was burning. That's the way you'll ever get anywhere. If you're on this path down the life's journey without God, without Christ, step aside tonight. Look it over and see what God will tell you. Take off your shoes, too, when you step on the holy ground and be reverent about it. Don't come to criticize. Be reverent. Believe. And then listen to what the Holy Spirit will speak in your heart. Be humble. Open up and let God have his way with you. Now, when Philip found out that Nathaniel was going back with him, perhaps Jesus was standing in the prayer line. I don't know where he was. He perhaps was in the prayer line. Philip might have come up to him in the prayer line, or he might have been standing out into the audience somewhere. But when Jesus turned around and he fastened his eyes up on Philip, he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now, if, if the Holy Spirit would repeat the same thing tonight, he would say, Here's a Christian, a truthful man, an honest. See? Behold an Israelite, a believer, in whom there is no guile. Why, it astonished the Israelite. How did that man know who I was? How did he know that I was an Israelite first? And how did he know that I was truthful and honest and no guile? He said, um, Whence knowest thou me, rabbi, or reverend, master, teacher? When did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. Why does that take place in New York tonight? you know what happened? You say, That's... That guy's a fortune teller. He's a, that's mental telepathy. Well, he's a witch. I know he was a soothsayer. See, that's the reason you don't get nowhere. You know what Philip done? Philip never stood back and said, Now, wait a minute. How did that, is he a fortune teller? Philip run and fell down by him. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Because I told you that, you believe? If he's a believer, he said, You'll see greater things than this. If you believe. Now, that was Jesus of 1900 years ago. Wouldn't that be Jesus tonight? Yeah. Same Jesus? One day in his journey, he went by, had to go up by Samaria. I wonder why. From Jericho, he is going to Jer Jericho. And on his road from Jerusalem, straight path, right to Jericho. But he went up around of Samaria. I wonder why. And he sent his disciples away. It was about 11 o'clock, they went out to get something to eat. And while they were gone, Jesus was sitting on the well, and a prostitute came out, a woman. Perhaps she'd been out all night, and she just got up at that later. Maybe she couldn't go out with the rest of the women, shame to be in their company. But anyhow, she'd come out being a Samaritan and let her, uh, her kittle down to get water. You ought to see how they do it in the Orient. And uh, let her kittle down to get water. And when she come to the well, Jesus said, Woman, bring me a drink. And she said, Well, it's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such. We have no dealings with one another. In other words, it was a race affair like between the colored and white today. She said, Well, we have no dealings with one another. She said, But uh, Jesus said to her, But if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And I'd give you waters that you didn't come here to draw. Wow. She looked at him. Well, she said, the well's deep. You have nothing to draw with. He said, but the waters that I give is the waters of life, springing up like a geyser in your soul, everlasting life. See what he was trying to do? Now, this is what I think. 
that he was trying to contact her spirit, for he was possessed with all the qualities of God. But first to this woman he must talk to her, catch her mind, get her directly in line. And so to catch her spirit, he had to bring this conversation around. Then when he caught her spirit, seen something that was vital in her life, he said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have any husband. So that's right, she got five. While she looked at him, notice, she said, well, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She said, now watch close. She said, we know that Messiah cometh, and when he comes, these signs will be with him. But being that you're a prophet, you must be a prophet to have these Messiah signs. Notice, the sign of a seer was the Messiah sign. She said, I know when Messiah cometh, he'll do these things. But who are you? You must be a prophet. She said, but when Messiah comes, he'll do this. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. There you are. That was Jesus yesterday. That was Jesus 1,900 years ago. That's Jesus tonight. Don't you believe that? Amen. Certainly it is. It's the same Jesus. Was well, she run into this city all excited and said, Come see a man told me everything he ever done. Well, he didn't do that. He just told her one thing. But if God could reveal to him one thing, he could reveal everything if he wanted to. So he, she knew that if he was empowered with God to see her life and see who she was. Well, God was with him, and he claimed to be the Messiah. So she said, Come see a man that told me everything he ever done. Isn't this the very Christ? So they went out and brought him into the city, and he began to speak to him. And when he was speaking, they realized that he was a different from the ordinary clergyman that they had of that day, because he spoke like he knew what he was talking about. It wasn't from some uh, theory or, or theology. He just spoke from what he knew was the truth without fear or wavering. He knew where he was. Now, that was Jesus 1,900 years ago. Now, let's give a little something. You believe he was full of mercy, full of compassion, full of love? All right, I'm not trying to hang you on something. But I want to show you something now, Bennett. We're talking the way we are. He came down to the pool of Bethesda. The Bible said that St. John, the fifth chapter, you that wants to read it, and came to the pool of Bethesda. And in this, around this pool lay great multitudes of people. It was a porch, five porches. It was over where there was the washing place and so forth, the sheep gates. And there was in there lay great multitudes of people, for God has always had a way for healing. No matter what it was, since the world began, God's made a way for healing his people. Now, and in there there was an angel came down every certain season, maybe once a month, and it troubled the water. You know what troubled waters are? Living close to this river, you should know. It's when the river's coming down this way, flowing, and the wind's blowing up that way, chops it. It's very dangerous water. And when this water, with no circulation of current, nowhere, but yet it chopped it and troubled it like that, an angel came down and troubled the water. It would chop up and down. And the first man stepping in with faith got healed of whatsoever disease he had. He first must believe it. The writers tell us it was such a pathetic sight till they stabbed one another to get, see who could get in first. And here comes Jesus coming down to this pool. The very Emmanuel, a woman who just touched the hem of his garment. He never prayed for her. She just touched his garment. He turned around and said, Your faith has made you all. And here he was coming here, the Emmanuel, walking through that pool. Let's draw a little dramatic picture here. Here's a mother with a waterhead baby, pleading to let her in first. Here's an old dad with arthritis drawn up like this. Here's a poor blind man that hasn't seen for years. Everyone hollering for mercy. Let them in first that the angel comes on the water. For every time anyone stepped in and a healing taken place, the virtue drove the angel off the water. And they waited for months to get back when the angel come again, whenever it would come at a certain season. And it came in. But the healing of the patient drove the strength of the angel off the water, and it left again. 
Uh, you wouldn't worry or wonder about weakness then, would you? See? All right. The virtue left the water as the first healing. Now, here comes Jesus, God himself, incarnate in his Son, Christ Jesus, tabernacle to take away sin. And sickness is an attribute of sin. All sickness originated from sin. Correct. Before we had any... If anyone could preach salvation of the soul and not preach divine healing, I do not see how you could sensibly look at the Bible. For instance, if a, a dragon or a reptile had me with his foot tonight hurt, uh, pulling my side, I don't have to cut his foot off to get rid of him. Just knock it in the head. It kills the whole body. And sickness is an attribute of sin. Before we had any sin, we never had any sickness. And sickness come because of sin. You see it? So you can't deal with sin on any measure unless you're dealing with sickness, weary, and every attribute that sin produces. See what I mean? Now, here comes Jesus, the atonement for sickness and sin, walking through the pool or around the pool, and there laid men and women everywhere in that pathetic Looks to me like he said, every one of you, get up and go on. You're well. If he was full of love and compassion, why didn't he do it? You ever think about that? That's a little different light maybe than what you read the Bible in. See? Why didn't he say, all you sick people, get up and go home now? If he loved them and felt sorry for them? But you know that Jesus of 1900 years ago walked right to that pool where great multitudes it takes 2,000 to make a multitude. Multitudes of people laid. Lame, the Bible said lame, halt, blind, and withered. Is that right? What a pathetic sight. And here's Emmanuel walking around that baby with a waterhead, walking around the Son of God, full of love and compassion, walking around that old blind daddy, walking around this man with arthritis, and never said a word about his healing. Strange, isn't it, being full of love and compassion? But that's the Scripture. St. John 5, read it. It's the New Testament. And he walked over to a man laying on a pallet. We call it pallet down south. I don't know. Just something laying there he's laying on. Laying on a pallet. Perhaps he had uh, uh, prostate trouble. Or he might have had TB. Ever what it was, he'd had it 38 years. It was retired. It wasn't going to kill him. He'd had it for 38 years. He wasn't crippled. Neither was he blind, lame, or halt. He could get up and walk. He said, when I'm coming down, somebody steps down ahead of me. Had it 38 years, and probably that older, older when he took it, so he may be a man 60 or 70 years old. But he was laying there, he's sick and upset, was laying on this pallet. And Jesus going around all those crippled and twisted and blind. What do you think you'd do tonight if you passed through New York and passed by them people? The same thing they'd said back there, just what they said. Let me see him heal this one, and I'll believe it. God doesn't heal on them conditions. No. Let me see him make these well. Let me see him... Well, I say, well, now, if you eat manual, why don't you raise your hands and say, every one of you, go home. You're well. I believe if he would have done that, they'd all went home well. But he didn't do it. wonder why. Now he said he was full of love and compassion. Why didn't he do it? He walked toward this one man, not in no bad shape. Not a bad shape at all. He walked over to him and said, Will thou be made whole? And the man said, Sir, I have no man to help me in the water while I'm coming down. Someone gets ahead of me. In other words, a young fellow, don't knock him out of the way and so forth so I can get into the water. They're stabbing one another's knives and things to get in. How can an old man like that make his way ahead of the young folks? Said, I have no one to bust the way for me otherwise to get me in. While I'm coming, somebody's done beating me in. Jesus said, Take up your bed and go into your house. Is that the scripture? And then instead of turning around and say, all the rest of you do the same, you and the cops and the stretchers and the blind and the lame, the whole, all of you do the same thing, instead of doing that, he turned around and walked away and left every one of them laying there. Neither do you know what love means. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. How would you, call, how would you interpret 1 Corinthians 13 as love? Though I have all these fine gifts, Paul said, though I give my body to be burned or sacrificed for the Lord Jesus Christ, though I give all my goods to feed the poor and everything, isn't that love? 
But that's not Bible love. See, you're talking about natural affection instead of divine revelation of the will of God. Jesus walked away and left every one of them people laying there. That was Jesus 1,900 years ago. They found this man packing his, his pallet on his back. He got up and went on. Jesus told him he was healed. He believed it. If he had doubted him, he just stayed la laid there. And then when the Jews caught this man, they questioned and they questioned Jesus. Now, here it is. Get it close so you'll never forget it. 19th verse of the 5th chapter of St. John. Read it all when you go home. They questioned Jesus. Why, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, listen, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. Well, whatever the Father doeth, he showeth the Son. Is that right? The Father worketh, and I worketh hitherto. In other words, I can do nothing as the Son of God. And man claiming to be divine healers, when even the Son of God didn't claim to be a divine healer. He said, I can do nothing. He didn't claim to be a healer. He said, it isn't me that does the work. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. Then if we are sons of God today with the Father's Spirit in us, what about him? The same Spirit, the same mind, the same works, the same power. Now, he said, I can do nothing except my Father shows me. And when, In other words, listen close now. This may shock just a little. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, never performed one miracle without first seeing a vision of it. Or he told something wrong there. He said, the Son can do nothing in himself but what I see the Father doing. Is that true? That was Jesus 1,900 years ago. Our time will get away soon. We must give some time for prayer. Teach people what the Scripture means. Now, Jesus said that he did nothing. You say, well, what about some blind man followed him one day on the street? He had no vision about him. They just hollering, having mercy, having mercy. And the disciples put him back, and he went into the house and sat down. After a while, the blind man got in some way. Somebody brought him in. He came up to him. He touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Is that right? One day, he was passing by Jericho. And there in the crowd, the great masses are calling and screaming and some making fun of him and everything. His face was set towards Calvary. He was moving on to Calvary. And way back in the shadows and the dark cold, a poor old blind beggar, ragged as he could be, begin to cry, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Of course he couldn't hear him with all that screaming and carrying on they had. And him walking on, his, knowing he was going to the burdens of the ever-living thing that ever lived or ever would live on the earth was up on his shoulders. He had set his face towards Calvary. But the faith of that blind beggar stopped him. And he turned around. A woman one time pressed to the crowd. She touched the hem of his garment, for she said, her faith said within her heart, if I can only touch his garment, I'll be made well. And she crawled under the feet of people, perhaps, and sit over and touched his garment, went right back and stood out in the audience like that. Jesus began to feel weak. He turned around, looked over the audience until he found her. Said, thy faith has saved thee. I never healed you. Your faith has saved you. Father never gave him any vision. But her faith pulled Jesus around to her and all that multitude. Is that right? That was Jesus 1,900 years ago. Wouldn't that be Jesus tonight? Is it possible? Now watch. Jesus said, the things that I do shall you also and greater, which the right interpretation is more, more than this will you do, for I go unto my Father. Is that true? Now, quickly, while we close. He said, a little while, and the world, cosmic, the word, word meaning the world order, 
a little while, and the world will see me no more. The world's the unbeliever, the self-styled, the starchy, the heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They'll see me no more. Yet ye shall see me. There's going to be some world. There's going to be some ye. Ye shall see me, the believer, for I, personal pronoun, for I will be with you, even in you, until the apostles are gone. No, sir. Until the end of the world. Is that right? I go away, but I come again. Is that right? And I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No plainer gospel. I do not know any more plainer gospel. Then, here's the challenge. Now, if he would come, how would he? Jesus has no hands on earth today but your hands and my hands. He uses my mouth and your mouth, my eyes and your eyes. And the whole thing is submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit of God. And God works to the individual. Do you believe that? May the Lord bless you. Now, if Jesus will come on the scene, many of you know my ministry. You've read the books. I'm your brother. There's no more grace to me than there is to the drunkard that was saved five minutes ago. God loves us all the same. We're not one above another. We're all the same. We're children. I've got two little girls and a boy. I do not make one ounce of difference in them. They're all the same. That's the way God does. If you're a housewife or if you're a preacher or a deacon or whatever you are, in the sight of God, we're all the same. We're just children. Each one has a job to do. And let's do it with all of our hearts. And now it's my sincere prayer tonight that God Almighty, through the visitation of the Holy Spirit, will come and send his Son, Christ Jesus, and I might submit myself completely to the Holy Spirit that he would come and do the same things that the Lord Jesus Christ did, that you might go away keeping your word tonight. I believe that he raised from the dead. Now, if he's dead, he can't do it. If he's alive, he's obligated to his word. Is that right? Shall we pray? Father, I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, that you'll come tonight in great power and force and love and manifest yourself to every heart that's here. Dear God, thou knowest my life, my soul, my heart. And know that I know no one here except this minister or two that I have met. Thou knowest them all, and you know what they have need of. Now I pray, God, that you'll supply. And may you send the angel of God that came to me that night up there at Green's Mill. And as he promised that he would do these things, may he come and manifest the Lord Jesus tonight and all the power and deity that he was when he was here on earth, that his word might be fulfilled. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant these things through his name we ask it. Amen. I, this for a prayer line, to call a prayer line, I want you to know, friends, it's going to be a difficult thing. Every person has a spirit. In a meeting like this, I said that I wouldn't have no more here in America because they just don't understand it. And the Asiatic countries or so forth, Africa, India, just one thing takes place and everybody's elated and alarmed. And they just get up and go home healed. Thousands times thousands and every sinner there comes to Christ the first time. See? But America, we go away scratching our heads saying, well, 
It might be something about it I don't understand. That guy might be a spiritualist. He might be wrong. I believe I'll just hang on to it. See, that's the reason you can't get things done here. That's right. This is the attitude. Of, remember, friends, your approach to any divine gift will determine what you receive from it. What if Martha that day when she seen Jesus and she went out there and re would rebuke him and said, Why didn't you come when we called you? Jesus had seen a vision about Lazarus. You believe that? Sure. Look, poor Lazarus got sick. Jesus went away. They sent for him. He just kept on going. They sent again, and he just kept on going. Well, if that be your pastor, you'd never speak to him again. But see, he was working the will of God. Then when he went away, after a while, he stopped. He said, well, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. He knew just exactly how many days it would be. The father had done told him. He said, just how many days it would be before Lazarus would be a, alive again. He said, our friend Lazarus is a dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there because you'd be asking me to go heal him. But I go wake him. But when Martha met him, look at her attitude. She went up there, looked like she had a right to upbraid him. But she didn't. If she would, the story had never been told. She fell down his feet. She said, Lord, that's what he was. If thou would have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know now, yet he's dead four days. The skin worms are done crawling in. The nose has fell in. So forth. If you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. That's the way to come. See? Humble. She said, he said, thy brother shall rise again. He said, yes, Lord. He's a good boy. He'll raise in the last day in the general resurrection. He said, but he wasn't much to look at. The Bible said there's no beauty we should desire him. Little skinny-like fellow, perhaps, but when he straightened his little self up, he made a statement that no one ever could make or never would make or can make from hereafter. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die. said, Believest thou this? She said, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ that was to come into the world, the Son of God. There you are. There's a broken-hearted woman wanting something, patiently standing before it, a master of circumstances and saying, Every hope is gone, but in you there's nothing too far gone. You're the Son of God. I don't care how many's making fun of you or whatever about I believe that you're God's servant, his son. I believe she'd read the Bible. You see where that Shunammite went to Elijah, fell down at his feet, for she knew that if she could ever get to that prophet, and they tried to make her leave. And she said, he said, go lay this staff, like Paul laying handkerchiefs, lay this staff up on him. But she said, as the Lord liveth in your soul never dies, I'll not leave you. She stayed right there. She knew that God was in his prophet, and he was the voice of God there on the earth, because he was God's prophet in that day. There was none like him on the earth. And she stayed right there with him. So he went, and she got what she asked for. She might not have known. She only thinks she don't know why the baby was dead. You just tell her. She was about losing the child. That, that was, she hated to do it. But she wanted to know why, and Elijah couldn't tell her. So he went to the child. He never prayed for the child. He just laid his body on the child. And the Spirit of God that was in that prophet come on to the child, and he sneezed seven times and stood up on his feet. I suppose that Martha said, if, if God was in his prophet, how much more is he in his son? So I'll go humbly and reverently and kneel down. Look at Jesus at the grave. You don't know where it was a vision or not. He'd seen it beforehand. He said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast already heard me. But I say this for those who stand by. Then he pulled his little self together and with a voice that spoke out the other when corruption knew its master. And a man laying there dead and the stone rolled away. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man had been dead for four days, stood on his feet and lived again. Oh, he's still Jesus. Certainly he is. He lives today. And I say it with humility and knowing that God will judge me. I've seen practically not that long dead, but I've seen three people pronounced dead, but doctors laid out and everything come to life again by the cause of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now I believe the boy come down and give out some prayer cards a while ago. And, uh, where'd you get one? Uh, 
100? Well, let's just start. Who has prayer card number one? But somebody's with prayer card number one. Who has it? We just have to, we just have to watch. Now, take this a little card. Got my picture on it. On the back of it, it's got a number and a letter. What was the letter? B. B? That's good for Beamington. <laughs> All right. Who has prayer card B number one? You back there, sir? Is that B number one? All right, come here. Who has B number two? Someone with B number two? You stand up. If you can, if you can't, just raise your hand. Some of the ushers will help bring you up here when your card number is called. B number two. Who has that? Someone with prayer card B number two? Surely it was given out. B number two? All right. Would you, that B number two lady come up here? Number two and stand here. Number three, who has three? Now, look at your card right away so you can catch it quickly. Number three, raise up your hand. Number three, all right, lady. Number four, who has number four? B number four. B number four, raise up your hand. Number four, all right, number five. Who has B number five? Raise up your hand. Prayer card B number five, where? Five, all right, lady, over here. Six, who has B prayer card? Six, six, all right, seven. Who has... We see you have to do this legitimately, friends. If crowd, you'd say everybody won't be prayed for to come here. You'd have an awful <laughs> congestion. All right, number what was that? Seven. But prayer card number seven. Who has prayer card seven? All right, little girl. Number eight. Who has eight? Prayer card number eight. The lady there in blue. Do you have it, sister? Uh, the lady here. Have you prayer card eight, lady? Eight, nine, raise up your hand so I can see where you are. Number nine, prayer card number nine, raise up your hand, if you will. Prayer card number nine, if I'm overlooking, all right, number nine, number ten, who has ten? Ten, all right, eleven. Prayer card eleven, is that it there? Eleven, all right, prayer card twelve, raise up your hand. Prayer card number twelve, right, twelve, thirteen. Prayer card number thirteen. You, sir, 14. Who has number 14? Prayer card 14. Raise up your hand so we can see. Prayer card 14. Is it here? Prayer card 15? Not here? Well, we'll stop then. That, all right. If uh, we, We'll wait this while till we get these prayed for then. Now, if 14 or 15 isn't here, or you're here and can't raise up, oh, I see. Number, what's your lady? 15, come right up here. Is 14 here? Prayer card 14, so might be somebody deaf and can't hear, you know. Look at your neighbor's card. Is this is that 14? All right, bring her right around. That's, now let's wait just a minute because we don't want to get too many on their feet at one time. All right. How many people here that hasn't prayer card and you want to be healed anyhow, raise up your hand. Will you anywhere in the building, regardless of where you are, who you are, just raise up your hand. My... Now that you have a prayer card, and there's no way for you to get up here tonight because we have to call him a card, I'm going to ask you something. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, can't your faith meet to a place? And if he comes here, not your brother, but if he anoints me with his spirit so that you can see that his presence is here, can't your faith touch him like the woman at the well? you turn around like she had a blood issue and say, thy faith has saved you. Don't you believe that? How many has ever seen it done in my meetings? Let's see your hands. Well, of course you have. Thousands of times, thousands of times. Now, these people standing here, that don't mean they're going to be healed. That means I just talk to them to see if the Holy Spirit... The only thing it is is to get it operating. Now, see, it's not me. I'm, I'm just a man. How many has ever seen this picture? Let's see your hands. Isn't that a pity? Uh, if I was going to be here a few days, it's over here in Washington, D.C., copyrighted by the American Photographer. It's a light. It's right here now. It's not, it's not far from, it's not ten feet from where I'm standing right now. If you'll watch and be real reverent, you'll see it when it moves over here. See? It's a light. And it's, I got the picture of it. It went through the American Photographer Association. George J. Lacey, the head of the FBI and fingerprinting document, tested it, took the cameras, went everywhere. He said, it is not psychology. The light struck the lens. It hung over me when I was a little baby, was born not over two minutes old. There it hung over my little crib, my mother screaming and everything. Born up there in the mountains, they didn't know what it was. My people were Catholic and, um, uh, before me. And so they, they didn't know what that meant. My father and mother didn't go to church at all. 
and they didn't know what it was. And the first thing I can remember in life is seeing a vision. It's always been. When I become a minister, my Baptist brother and them told me it was the devil. And I was out for years, fought at it, was out trying to get rid of it, saying, God, don't never let it happen to me again. You know I love you, Lord Jesus. And there comes someone walking across the floor, just light above him. There's a great strong man with his arms folded like that, come to my right hand side. He said, For this cause you was born in the world to pray for sick people. Mm-hmm. And said, You'll be praying for kings and potentates and monarchs all over the world. I said, Sir, I dwell among my people. I'm poor. I was scared to death. I was oh, oh, chewing on my finger. Ill. You would be too. Yes, you would. And he's come to me hundreds of times since then. And he said, If you get the people to be sincere, and be, if you get the people to believe you and be sincere when you pray, nothing will stand before the prayer. And I said, They won't believe me, sir. I said, I'm uneducated. If you would send someone, he said, as the prophet Moses has given signs to vindicate his ministry or his calling, said, so has been given to you. And said, you know the very secrets of their hearts and so forth. Well, I, I said, that's what I'm here praying for, sir. He let me know how mistaken the ministers was and said, don't you realize that that was the same thing that our Lord Jesus did on earth? Just the return of his spirit. Now, I'm going to ask you, friends, if you're a critic and don't believe, I wouldn't stay in a meeting any longer, see? Because remember, diseases are demons, and they go from one to another. Unbelievers, see? Because I've seen some horrible things happen in the meetings, and you know what I'm talking about, see? But if you're a Christian and a believer, I'm responsible. Now, it's hard here, because see, here, look, sitting here, these people sitting this close, and around over here, around behind me, it's spirit everywhere, see? Spirit everywhere I stand is spirit. And see, each one of those people, there may be things wrong with them, but they're human beings. Now, remember, each one of you is a spirit. And then when that spirit of you begins to come in, and it's coming from everywhere, and it's hard to tell just where it is like that. Usually, I'm up on a platform, way away, thousands of people sitting out there, no one around me at all, and I stand there. Then I got the individual to myself. But sometimes it breaks in someone sitting out there praying. Here I'm looking at somebody. Here the vision breaks, and it just looks, and you see. You see what's going on. And... You don't realize what a condition it takes you in. Now, if he comes, remember, they'll probably take me from the building as they do my son standing by to watch when it's enough. It changes me altogether, go into another world. Just think, stand here talking to a person that may go 40 years back and be back there seeing what he done, talking and knowing my voice is coming in here, yet I'm 40 years back down the line. And maybe go years beyond this and tell him what's going to be in the future. Remember, watch every word, for thus saith the Lord. See, when you hear that, there's probably a tape recording going on, is there? And if anybody questions about what he said, play the tape recording over, and you'll get it. Remember, when you see anything that he speaks himself and saying, Thus saith the Lord, mark it right down. That's the way it is. See, that's the way. And if God knows, can tell you what you was and what's wrong and where you're at and all these things that what was in your life, and you know whether that's true or not, Surely you can believe what he says about the future will be true. Is that right? That's right. Now, if he will come and reproduce that life, would you believe? Every one of you believe with all your heart and go out and say, Yes, Jesus raised from the dead. Now, the Lord bless you, and I will the organist quietly as you can, sister. The little song, Only Believe, if you will, for me. It's been a song that's led me to the platform under hundreds and hundreds of different languages. And there's something about it that I like, only believe. I know one going out, moving around, sit still, till a little interview or a little time of stopping, if the line lasts long, I don't know. Or if he comes, I don't know. But if it happens, we'll suppose we'll have a meeting here tomorrow night again. Uh, he'll announce it as far as I know. But you see, who, who shows things, he's the one who directs and sends things. Now, be reverent. If the little babies or anything, or a case of epilepsy, sometimes that's the hardest thing I have to deal with. I've seen it throw seats out on the floor, demons and everything else, and you, you've heard of it, you know. So just keep everybody quiet. Don't, if it, anything starts acting wrong, you just sit real still. Remember, I'm responsible before God, see. But if you're a critic, I'm not responsible before God. So be that well assured by the state laws. I've got to say that first before a meeting, see. Now may the Lord bless while we bow for prayer.
your heavenly Father, that thy love rest now and upon this the congregation of the people. Thou bear me record, my Father, that I have told this audience that it's your grace to them, and it's sent for them that they might believe that you are God and Jesus Christ is your Son, and that you love them and has redeemed them with his blood to your own self, a peculiar people, but glorious in thy sight, that they might have courage to go on believing. And Father, alone that is my cry, and believing that you let these things happen like this to glorify you. So I go forward now asking that you'll send that angel that spoke to me that night and anoint your servant, for I'm just a man, that it might be known that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I go forward now for the sake of the people and the gospel of Jesus Christ to meet the enemy. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, if everyone be reverent just a moment and don't um, just be in, just silently in prayer. Don't you don't have to bow your head unless I tell you to. Watch whatever it says. Do it. Or being just a man, I don't know what he's going to do. I know one thing that he's here. It's just come in just now from my right hand side here, and at this time, after I feel his anointing. Know that he who has been with me since the baby, I take every spirit in here under my control in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of God. I'll be reverent. And now, for the patient, this, uh, you're the patient, sir. Being a patient, and perhaps the first patient, I want to talk to you just a moment. As we're perfectly strangers to one another, I suppose, and as far as knowing anybody in this building, at this time, God in heaven knows I don't even see my own boy. He's here somewhere, but I know these, some of these men right here, sitting right behind me. I do not know one person out there, right, or no one in the prayer line. I, oh, I see my boy now sitting over here. I'm perfectly strangers. We are here on this earth. But remember, God knows every one of you. He knows all about you. And now, if Jesus was standing here like he did the woman at the well, he'd talk to her a few minutes. So, spirit. And that's what I'd have to do. If his anointing is on me now, I'd have to do the same thing, sir. And then if he could reproduce his life again to me, his servant, then he would he'd be the same yesterday and forever. Do you believe that? You do. The one thing I can perceive about you now, sir, you are a Christian believer, or your spirit comes in welcome. And I know that you are a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. One thing you've got wrong with you is an allergy. And then you've got a trouble in the intestinal tract. It's in the colon, I believe he said. It was a fallen colon, says your doctor. You're not from around here. You come from Upper New York. You're a minister, a Baptist preacher at that. Mm -hmm. Stuart, a name. You live at number 80 Pleasant Street, Brunswick, New York. You've got a wife. I see her standing by you. She's a little woman. She's nervous. She has kind of little spells, like now her spirits are moving in. She's having a nervous, upset condition. That's her sitting right back there. What? They come kind of spasmodically, those nervous spells. They come and then you're wanting a closer walk with God. 
You're wanting to plunge out into the ministry, the full gospel, and preach it in its power of demonstration. Kind Heavenly Father, be merciful now in thy presence here, bless who I bless thou hast said whatever you do and do it in your name, it should recognize it. And now, by the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I condemn every enemy of his life and ask for his deliverance in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sir. At this time, I don't remember what it was, but whatever it is, is truth. Is that right? Raise your hand if that's the truth. God bless you. Go rejoicing now and behold. God bless you. I'll be reverent. You believe? Yes. With all your heart? Yes. This is the patient. Um, not, I'm not beside myself, but you understand. You, um, you believe the Lord Jesus? Surely. You believe me to be his servant? And you're conscious now that you're standing in the presence of something beside your brother, for it's moving between us now, the light. It's a feeling on you now that you haven't felt. Isn't that true? Warm feeling of welcome. You're worried, upset, bothered because you're headed for a hospital. That's what you're scared of. Yes? And you're scared you got cancer when you get there. I'm not reading your mind, lady. You couldn't hide your life now if you had to. No, you're... It's not cancer. You've got a female, dropped female organ. Mm -hmm. Complications and so forth. That true? Yes. Well, if the Lord Jesus is here, you're standing perhaps poster in his presence than you ever did in all your life. He said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Do you believe it? I do. Come here, my sister. Shall we bow our heads? Our kind Heavenly Father, feeling the pressure and power of the Holy Spirit moving here now that knows the secret of every heart. Nothing can come before you now. Here stands this poor woman suffering, and in obedience to the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ, I lay hands upon this my sister and condemn the enemy of her body in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Trying to believe, aren't you, sir? You believe the water would leave your lungs if I'd ask God to let it go? You believe that God would do it? Take the water off your lungs? Stand up then to your feet and accept your healing. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need the handkerchief. Put it back in your pocket. All right. Now, go and the water's left your lungs now. Jesus Christ has made you whole. Amen. Have faith in God. Ever demons defeated. His Majesty the King is in our midst tonight. He is here. Nothing, nothing, nowhere. Believe with all your heart. Patience. How do you do, sister? Lovely little person, you have a fine spirit, you're a Christian. God bless you. Had lots of trouble, haven't you? Your trouble, you're here for me to pray for you, it's in your head. You're having trouble with your head. You had a fall once to give you a concussion, it's injured you. You've had trouble ever since, haven't you? Do you believe it's gone now? 
Come here. You want me to lay my hands on you? Oh, Father God, in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus, I condemn this enemy that would send her to a premature grave. May the demon come from her, and may she go and be made well through thy Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Mother. Go thanking the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's everywhere now. Your face is moving marvelously. You just only have faith. Your diseases leave you right now. That's all you have to do. You don't have to have a prayer card. You don't have to be up here. Just have faith in God. That's all I ask you to do. Just believe him with all your heart. Amen. How do you do, lady? You believe with all your heart. We're strangers to one another, lady. I don't know you, never seen you in my life. Isn't that true? Don't know nothing about you. You know that. We just met here, that's all. God does know you. Don't you believe that? You're a Christian believer. We're standing here as brother and sister. God standing here is our Father. There's no doubt but there's something wrong with you that I do not know. But Father knows. And he gave me a gift that I could come help you, my sister. And I can only do it as you believe me to be his servant. I have confidence in you as my sister in the Lord. You believe me as your brother. God is your father. And believe that God sent me as your brother. And uh, you believe me to be his prophet, uh, a minister, seer, whatever. You know it's coming from somewhere. You're conscious that something's going on now. That's right. I ask the audience to watch the face and the expressions of the people. When they walk here, they know they're in the presence of something. Not your brother standing here. You know that. It's your Savior who's raised from the dead come to help you. Your troubles in your neck. You had an accident. And slipped a vertebrae in your neck. You come up the road tonight when you come up. There's a big dual way. You come from the city below here. You brought some friends with you. They want to be healed also. One of them's in a wheelchair, and he suffers with multiple sclerosis. Is that true? Come here. Let's bow our heads. Kind Heavenly Father, show mercy tonight and grant the healing of our sister as we know your spirit baptizing, moving through this audience. While we're in your presence, God, I obey the commandments of your Son, the Lord Jesus, the last thing he said, leaving the earth that if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. That I believe, Lord, and make this act of faith for my sister and condemn the disease, whatever it was, Lord, you know. I don't remember it this time, but you know. And I pray that you'll heal her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I look, sister. I don't know what it was, but what was said was true. Is that right? Yes, it was true. Every word of it. A stranger. Some way. Of course, when it leaves me, then I don't know. The only way I know is to pick up the tape tomorrow, find out what it was. But you know whether that was true or not. Now, you know you're near something. Isn't that right? You believe it to be the Lord Jesus, everything that he said? Believe the sermon that I preached or talked about, 
that he'd come and manifest himself? Do you believe that's true? The audience believe that with all their hearts? Then he's here. God bless you, sister. Sister, are you just trying to pray? Going to the hospital now for an operation for gallstones. You believe the Lord Jesus could make you well of that without being on? Yes, ma'am. You believe that he would do it? Would heal you and make you well? You do? Aren't you facing an operation? Yes. Yes. You believe that God will make, take, make you well? Raise up your hand. Lord Jesus, I condemn that demon, seeing the white thing over her face moving into the hospital. But I ask that Jesus Christ stand at the door and rebuke it. May it leave her and come out of her. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. God bless you, sister. Your faith saves you from death itself. Believe. All you must do is have faith in God. You believe? You must believe or you're going to hospital too. They would cover you over, up around your neck, operate from the head for a tumor. The tumor's in the head. Oh, may God stop that. But you have a right to live. Jesus died that you might live. I'm a stranger to you. But I'm your brother, but now I'm his servant, too. You believe if I obey what he said, do not, well, this anointing here is on me. You believe if I lay my hand on you and ask God it would go from you, would you come forward? where people bow their heads. Kind Heavenly Father, as my sister stands here, knowing that just a short time and a horrible thing would happen. Satan, you evil thing, you came to hold her. Well, I adjure thee by the living God in the name of Jesus Christ that you leave her and her life is spared. Come out of her. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I bless this, my sister, for her healing. Amen. God bless you, lady. Have faith in God. If you believe, or Sister, you face an operation too, it'd make anyone weep. You have gallstones also, sitting around on the end of the row back there, sitting there crying. I want to tell you, it left you a few minutes ago, your faith has healed you, lady. Stand up on your feet. You're healed now. Go and God's peace be upon you. Praise be to God. Your heart trouble, sir. You had heart trouble. Been bothering you for a long time. Go on your road rejoicing, saying, Thank you, Lord hey, Jesus, for, your, for the healing. Have faith. Don't doubt. Be irreverent. Amen. Just a time. Hi, honey. Standing before me is a little girl. <clears throat> and she's a little, pretty little girl, a little red-headed girl with long plastic. I got a little girl at home. Her name is Rebecca. And she's trying to have long plastic. 
too. And she said, Daddy, must you leave? And I said, Yes, I must go. She don't want me to leave. She's afraid for me to travel the roads and fly through the air because she loves me. But you know, Jesus came all the way from glory and died for the same purpose. And God, I left my little girl tonight to come here to pray for you. If Jesus was here on earth in a body of flesh, he'd come take little girls like you and lay his hands up on them and bless them. If he'd do you that way, you'd get well, wouldn't you, honey? You believe Jesus sent Brother Branham, then he went away, that Jesus sent Brother Branham back for me to pray for you? And they, Now, if Jesus was here, he'd know you, wouldn't he? He'd know all about you. He'd know what was wrong with you, wouldn't he? Can Jesus tell Brother Branham what's wrong with you? And would you believe then that Jesus sent me to pray for you? You got kidney trouble, don't you have, honey? That's right. Raise up your little hand. Now come here just a minute. Dear God and Father, as this lovely little innocent, tender child stands here, and thou hast said in thy word, Suffer little children to come to me, forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. I pray that you will be merciful to this child. And in the absence of the body, fleshly speaking, of the Lord Jesus, but his spirit here, I say to the enemy of this child's body, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I come to challenge you in this duel of faith, and you can't hold the child any longer. We represent Jesus Christ's vicarious suffering and death at Calvary, and you were defeated there. And come out of the child in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Have your hand. It's all right. You're going to be all right now, sweetheart. You're going to be well and good. You go to Sunday school and love the Lord Jesus. Just keep serving him. You'll be all right. Tom, <clears throat> lady, you're a stranger to me, aren't you? In the commission of the Lord Jesus, when he told me that night at the mill, his angel, he said, two signs was given to Moses. And Moses, with a sign of his hand, he done one sign, and with a stick he did another sign. Isn't that right? Now, one of mine was to take a hold of people, hand, know the secrets of their heart. You believe you're standing in his presence, not your brother? You do, or you have a good faith facing an operation for a tumor. But you don't, you have faith. Let me show you something, sister. You've been real nervous too, haven't you? And especially of a late of the evening, you get weak and can't do your work right. You sit down. I'm not reading your mind, but that's true. Especially late of an afternoon, you sit down. When you heard this service was coming on, you thought that would be the... Um, that's exactly. And you prayed to God that you'd be brought up here, and here you are tonight. Isn't that true? Who knows your prayer but God alone? Let me have your hand just a moment. I want you to look at my hand right here. Just an ordinary man's hand, isn't it? I want you to put your hand here on my hand and watch what effect it has to my hand. Now look at it swelling up. Some little white things running over my hand there. I want you to take this hand off and put the other hand on. Now it isn't there, is it? No swelling, nothing hurt. Now I take your hand off and put my hand on. Doesn't affect it a bit, does it? Now I put this hand here on. Now watch what takes place. Now look at it. Is that right? Little white things are rushing over the top of it like that. Vibrations like that. That shows that there's an enemy called tumor in you. It's got a life. 
and the life of that thing, being that I'm anointed now with his spirit, is going back. It's given a physical effect that you can see what's taking place. It's got a life in it just like you got a life. It's growing just like you grow. But it's, it's you are put here by God. The devil put that on you. Now, divine healing takes it away. Now, just move your hand yourself off of my hand. Just lay, raise your hand up. Just take it right off of my hand. Now, look at my hand now. See? Now, just lay this other hand on so you can be sure. Doesn't do a thing, does it? Just the same. Now, just take your hand again and lay it right back there and watch what takes place. Now, look at it. This swelling, turning, dark and white thing jumping over. That's your tumor. That's some physical demonstration that you see yourself. Isn't that right? To this audience, if that's true, raise your hand. Now, do you believe that Jesus Christ can take that life out of that thing? He can. Our kind Heavenly Father, as we come to Thee, approaching Thee in Jesus Christ's name, grant that the power of this enemy will leave the woman, and may she go from here tonight and be well. Grant it, Father, through Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Now, you believe now that you're, you... Let me see again. Uh, I'm sorry, it didn't. It didn't go. There it is, just the same. Let's see. I see it. I love it. My own faith in God will take it away from you, but it won't stay unless you have the same faith. Don't just come with a real reverence. Just to, don't just be normal and say, God, you promised that I'm your child. Now watch, so you can see what I mean to 90% of the people, sister, 90, 99 tenths that come saying, oh, I got faith. They have hope instead of faith. Faith is positive. When this is off of me, my faith is weak too. But now I want you, so the audience, now audience, this is a stubborn case. I have never seen one time that I ever sinned Surely ask God. I've never seen the case but what he, he did it then. I've seen man totally blind, sent the platform, read the Bible, and walk back down the audience, and two days come back be as blind as he was in the first place. But the devil has to recognize, not me, but what's here now. He has to do it. I want you, because this being stubborn, to bow your head, but I want the lady to watch my hand. You, you, you've got the tumor. Now, please, friends, this stubborn, you know, if it comes out... It'll go somewhere. Just keep your head bowed. Now, sister, you watch my hand. Just watch. Now, you're, you're watching it. See those little white things running there? Now, you watch them. Now, you, you keep watching while I pray. Now, kind Heavenly Father, not at all, God, that we have to see miracles to, to be believers, but that this little woman here, knowing that, that she's in worse shape than she really realizes she is. And, Father, that they might know that you're the Son of God, I ask you to be merciful to the woman. And now heal her, God, in the name of Jesus, I ask it. Now, with your heads bowed, now, sister, it hasn't stopped yet. I can still feel it without my eyes being open. That's right, isn't it? It's still moving. If that's right, say yes. yes. Yes, it's still moving. I keep my hand laying right where it is. Don't move at all so that you'll see that it's actually left. Now, Lord, help me, dear God. I've come here to New York for some purpose to obey the feeling of your spirit. And now that these people might know that you are the Son of God and I'm telling the truth, vindicate your word, Lord, if no more. Let your word be known tonight as this woman's watching my hand. I pray thee, Father, to be merciful and anoint your servant and protect us all now as we go in this challenge. Satan, you evil spirit, you think you can hold that woman? You can't. You're sure of that angel of God who's standing here, and I take the Jewish diction over you by the authority of Jesus Christ. 
who is presence I stand in, come out of her. In the name of the Lord Jesus, leave her. Now with your heads bowed, ladies watching my hand, it's never moved, but lady, my hand has gone back normal, hasn't it? The lady, has it turned back normal and white again? Now you can raise your heads, folks, before I look at it myself. My hand laying on this desk is turned normally back. Is that right, lady? If it is, raise up your hand. The spot is all gone. It looks out. The, tell the people over here. The white spot is all gone, but it looks... It did look puffed up. It's gone now. That's normal now. See? That was raised up. It isn't now. Now I put this hand over here. Is that just puffed as much, but it's normal, isn't it? I put this hand back here. Something has happened, hasn't it? Is that right? <laughs> no white spots? No puffing up? Now, look, put my hand on it. Just the same, isn't it? This hand, just the same. Now this hand, just the same. Is that right? Then you're healed. You see that yourself. It's gone from you. God bless you. Go on your road rejoicing. Little female trouble, too, but don't. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who made all things for his glory and for his blessing. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He that was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David, the morning star. He'll light up the way through the valley, the shadow of death. The fear is taken from his people. May you realize tonight, people, as you're standing in his divine presence, the majesty of the King of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's not your brother. It's his presence. You believe me, sir, as God's prophet, Got an ulcerated stomach. Go eat your supper now. It's gone from you. You can eat like you used to now. Your faith has saved you and made you whole. You believe the heart trouble left you when you come up the steps? Then go on your road rejoicing and being happy. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. Amen. You think that bronical trouble will leave you sitting there, brother? You believe that God will make you whole? You do? You're sitting there praying a few minutes ago, wasn't you? Want to know if God would heal you. If that's right, raise up your hand. I'm not reading your mind, but that's the truth. You're bothered with bronical trouble. You believe you accept your healing now? If you do, wave your hand like that to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Oh, God be with you. What do you think about sitting out there with lung trouble? You believe sitting out there on you? You believe God will make you well too? You're just looking at me sitting out there. Do you believe that God will make you well? Accept it. Wave your hand to God. Say, I believe it and God makes me well. So you don't need your prayer card. The only thing, you don't have to have prayer cards. You have to have faith in the Son of God. And he shares to manifest and to do exactly what he said he would do. Had a funny feeling I spoke heart trouble to that man a while ago, didn't you? That's right. You were healed at the same time. You can go on your road rejoicing and saying, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You believe, sister, that God heals you? You believe that God makes you well right now? That's exactly what he does. Go rejoicing, sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's say praise the Lord. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Do you realize that it's the Lord Jesus Christ here with you tonight? Are you believing with all your heart? I believe that God... All sufficient power moves over this building right now and can heal every person here. Do you believe me to be his prophet? If you'll do this, then obey what I tell you to do and you'll be healed right now. Lay your hands over on one another. Put your hands over on each other. Oh, my. God bless you, brother. That old heart that's gone gone. You go off here rejoicing, happy. Oh, almighty God. Author of life, giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this people. And now Satan, 
You ugly thing that's bound these dear poor people. You're exposed here tonight. You're defeated. Your time has come. Come out of this people. I adjure thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you depart from every one of these people and let them be well. In Jesus Christ's dear name, I ask it for God's glory. Amen.